Welcome to the Asian Tapestry. Chapter 4 Muhammad of the Bow Slaying with his arrow Two lions with one blow Hello and welcome to the Asian Tapestry, a podcast about myths, legends, and lore from Asia, structured in a book-like format called the Book of Fables. Before I continue, I just have an important announcement to make. The show will be going on hiatus from September to November, while I move to Edinburgh for my PhD, deal with the logistics of setting in, and have my annual review. So I thought it was best that I take a small break while I'm doing all of that, but I'm sure that I will be back for December and perhaps have a few Christmas special episodes ready as well. Now, our last chapter was called The Cat and the Princess and the Silver Ring, Part 2. A tale from India, where a cat, a dog, and a snake prince befriend a young man after he is cast out by his own father. After many trials and tribulations, the man becomes a prince of the Grand Castle, and lives happily with his beautiful wife and his two fur companions, cat and dog. Today's chapter is a rather lengthy title, called Muhammad of the Bow, Slaying with His Arrow, Two Lions with One Blow. This is a Persian tale. Once upon a time, a man named Muhammad was sitting at his bench, hard at work. He was a shawl weaver, and a good one at that. Now as he sat and weaved, a small movement caught his eye. Two mice were playing together, wrestling and climbing onto each other's backs. Distracted by this, Muhammad roughly threw the shuttle into the warp, and watched in shock as it slipped from his hand and fell onto the mice killing them both with one blow. At this, his colleagues looked up and saw the shuttle strike the two mice. They jumped up from their seats and crowded around Muhammad, cheering and clapping his back. Such aim! Well done! Your name should be Tirandes, Muhammad of the Bow. Staying with his arrow two lions at one blow, they exclaimed. Tirandes meant archer, and so the men shouted out, You should not be here weaving shawls, but an archer. Now, Muhammad took their words to heart not realising that they were mostly joking and speaking in good spirits. So, he left the shawls and went home, asking his mother for some money, which she gave him. Arriving at the market, he made his way to an archery stall, where he purchased a bow and some arrows. He had the following words inscribed on the bow. I am Muhammad Tirandes, Muhammad of the bow, slaying with my arrows two lions at one blow. And receiving the weapons, Muhammad set out for the desert. Walking through the desert, Muhammad felt himself grow tired and thirsty. Luckily, he soon found a stream to drink from and a tree to rest under. Hanging his bow and pouch of arrows on a tree branch, Muhammad fell fast asleep. While he slept, a horseman from the kingdom came across him 
and grew intrigued by the strong youth. He peered closely at the bow, and read the words, marvelling at them. So he sat down, and waited for the young man to wake up. Not too long afterwards, Muhammad woke, and seeing the horseman, startled slightly. The horseman asked him, Who are you? And Muhammad replied, I am Muhammad Tarandes, Muhammad of the Bow, slaying with my arrows two lions at one blow. And why have you come out here? asked the horseman, to which Muhammad replied that he was hunting. Are you a good shot? asked the horseman, to which Muhammad replied, Yes, I am. And so the horseman offered for him to come to the kingdom and become a soldier for the king for whom he would fight, if there ever was a war. Muhammad found this agreeable and they set off together soon afterwards, munching on some bread which the horsemen had broken between them. When he arrived and had an audience with the king, the Muhammad explained who he was. I am Muhammad Tarandes, Muhammad of the Bow, slaying with my arrow two lions at one blow. The king, duly impressed, gave Muhammad a welcoming gift and an appointment in his house as a soldier, as well as a salary. This all pleased Muhammad greatly, who soon discovered that his duties were mainly eating and sleeping, as there were no wars immediately at hand. This suited Muhammad as he really did not know how to fight at all. Then, one day, an army arrived and besieged the castle. Now it was time for Muhammad Tarandes to prove himself, and so the king summoned him and instructed him to go out and fight for his kingdom. Muhammad didn't really have a choice in the matter, and rather glumly said, my pleasure. So, going out, he found a horse and some servants waiting for him. Now, Muhammad had never ridden a horse, and paled slightly as he looked up at the majestic stallion. But, taking a deep breath, he instructed the servants to tie his feet together tightly under the horse. They marvelled at him, convinced that he was readying himself for some grand plan, and so they did as he instructed. Then he swung the bow and arrow onto his back, and set out for battle. Shaking slightly as the horse took up a quick trot. As he approached the battlefield, the rein slipped from his shaking hand, and the horse, sensing the apprehension of his rider, took control and bolted across the field. <laughs> Mohammed let out a silent scream, and flailed as he struggled to get control of the reins, but they kept slipping from his fingers. They rode past a tree, and in his fear, Muhammad grabbed hold of the tree, and the force of the horse's gallop tore the tree from its roots. Muhammad, the horse, and the tree in his hands, tore across the field. Catch the reins! Catch the reins! Muhammad shouted out. But his men simply cheered as they watched their champions storm ahead, majestically and heroically using a tree as a weapon. The enemy heard his words and believed that he was telling his men to catch the enemy's reins and stop them from escaping. This struck terror within them, as they watched this mad warrior gallop at full speed towards them, holding a great tree and yelling at the top of his lungs. They turned round and began fleeing from Muhammad, and as they fled, the king's soldiers yelled and chased them and cheered for Muhammad, shouting out, This is Muhammad Tarandaz, Muhammad of the bow, who slays with his arrow two lions at one blow. And with that, the enemy was defeated, without Muhammad ever loosing an arrow. The king was extremely grateful towards Muhammad, and gave him many gifts and riches. Muhammad Tarandas, the archer, was appointed commander-in-chief to the king's armies, and enjoyed many more long years in luxury and happiness. And so ends our story of Muhammad the shawl weaver, who became Muhammad Tarandas, Muhammad of the bow, who slays with his arrow two lions at one blow. I really enjoyed that story. I adapted it from a retelling by D.L.R. Larima and E.O. Larima in their book Persian Tales, 
Uh, they translated the tale from the original Persian in 1919. The story reminded me of the tale of Kara Mustafa, the hero, a Turkish tale in which Mustafa claims that he kills 60 flies with one blow and 70 with the next. My good friend Dustin from Sandman Stories Presents tells this tale beautifully, and I highly recommend you check it out on his podcast. I'll pop the link to this in my show notes. It also reminds me of the German fairy tale, The Brave Little Tailor, who also achieves wealth and fame through trickery, although he is more devious in my opinion than Muhammad, who largely got his aim by accident. The Brave Little Tailor, a story attributed to the Brothers Grimm, kills seven flies with one blow, much like Karo Mustafa. I love finding similarities between folk tales, and it's always so remarkable to see how different cultures hold things in common while still possessing their own unique features. And that brings us to the end of chapter 4 of the book Fables, Muhammad of the Bow, slaying with his arrow, two lions with one blow. I sincerely hope that you have enjoyed this tale as much as I have, and that you join me once more for chapter 5 in December. Intro music was Jalandar by Kevin MacLeod, and outro music was Raga, Dance of Music by Akash Gandhi. Further details, including license information, may be found in the show notes. I have been your host, the Shira Papa, and you've been listening to The Asian Tapestry. Mm-hmm.